Welcome to this Zentangle Quickie. My name is Heather Hartwick Ledden. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher. And today we're going to take a look at the tangle Zeal from CZT Jane Dickinson. This is one of those looks um, looks more impressive than it is hard type tangles. <laughs> Uh, and it starts off on a grid, so we'll go ahead and get started. I am just going to do a four square on here, so it's quick and easy to see. All right, so there's one square, now I'm going to divide it into fourths. <laughs> All right. Okay, this one nicely also forgiving. As you can see, my grid is not, you know, when it's freehand. It's not going to be perfect. So, and there's no such thing as mistakes in Zentangle. So, it's all going to be good. Next step, and so this one is is pretty forgiving. So it does. It's not going to matter. And actually, I'm thinking, hmm, I'd have to try it with uh, an unpurposely wonky grid. We're going to do diagonal lines. We're going to essentially create a diamond. So. Uh, the same angle, oh, let's see, how do I want to word that? Okay, if I'm doing this angle here, I turn my tile, I'm going to do the same angle. And I turn my tile, I do the same angle. <laughs> turn my tile, and do the same angle, like that. So if that works, so it essentially, um, yeah, however you want to get, we're creating a diamond inside that uh, square. Next step. Now this um, this tangle, the inspiration for this tangle was um, Eck, E-K-E, -E. and I know I did a video on that some time ago. So if, you've, if you're familiar with that, um, then this will seem familiar to you. And if not, take a peek at that video. Um, this is a, an interesting uh, tangulation um, on it. All right. Actually, and I wouldn't even call it a tangulation because it's it's uh, it's using the similar stroke um, in a different way. All right. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do this in basically in one uh, stroke of the pen, and it's just kind of doing loop to loops. And I know that loop to loop isn't a isn't a, one of the five essential strokes, but the curved line is, and so we're kind of just gonna do a big continuous. Um, I don't know, continuous curve line, continuous orbs. All right, so starting here, growing up into this little space, we're essentially going to do three. One up into the center, and then another one, and then, and I'm liking to end those up like so. Okay, going slow helps. I was really thinking that I would need to somehow do the center first and then work out on the outsides, but then I told myself it really doesn't matter, and so I just went with it. So it's one of those, it'll be okay. All right, so then same thing on, on each side, each outer side, we're doing this. And like I said, if you go slow, then it's okay. Then you can kind of gauge how, you know, uh, you know, getting up sort of into that center. And you know what? If you don't hit it, oops, sorry, um, you're okay. And maybe you can kind of eyeball sort of into thirds. Like I said, it, it, it all doesn't matter um, in the end because it'll look cool no matter what. All right, so we've done all of these sides. Now, we're essentially going to repeat, but on the insides. And so... Um, and using the straight line, so what we did, so we went, you know, up, right, with the, the loops going up from this straight line. And I'm just going to go ahead and start here, since it's right here. And we're still going to go up, up into this corner. But it will be opposite, you know, what's our, oops, sorry for the shaking of the camera. It'll be opposite of what's there. It kind of helps, because with this already here, if you wanted to measure against, you know, this cross marks where you've gone up, you certainly can. That can help. Okay, pen. Because it is similar. And like so. And I don't know why this pen is kind of acting up. And then, same thing, rinse and repeat. It's so lovely. 
you know, and they don't have to line up. They don't have to do anything. Just get that, uh, this big continuous, uh, curve on a curve on a curve. <laughs> uh, also known as a loop-de-loop. -loop. <laughs> there we go. And while this looks really, really neat, just as it is, and I would dare say you could maybe have some fun with shading, we'll do the final step here, though. Um, you know, and with tangles, and so what we're going to, well, I'll go into the talking while we're filling in. Um, we're going to fill in certain areas. So I, I'm going to start with this top section. So I'm doing the, the top of that one loop. And then these little sections here, we're going to do both so I can just go ahead and, and fill in these little gaps right here. And then the ends. Now these, I, I could probably move to, sure I can, <laughs> if I hadn't, uh, there it is, if I hadn't moved my, my, my graphic one as I was messing with this. And you know, and you know, these aren't even, and so that's okay too. I'm just, I'm gonna fill in, regardless, and just go with it. You know, because there's, well, it's like I could, but you know what? I'm, I'm not gonna mess with making that even there. I don't think it really matters. Um, and I reserve this for these bigger areas, just because you know the nib is big, and so it's not gonna fit into those tight little areas very well. So we'll do these big ones first. And what I was going to say <laughs> is what's so fun about Zentangle is some some tangles like this you can you could stop at any point and uh, and go from there. This one you know this is you, you know where she is doing the coloring in but you know, if you decided you wanted to do something else, of course you can. I like to keep the spirit of the tangle. And a lot of times I honestly don't necessarily, I, I don't aim to mess with them too much. But sometimes as I'm doing them, I can see where, oh gosh, that would be really neat to do this. And then I, and then I might. So I don't want anyone to feel pressure that, um, oh, we have to be, you know, uh, super uber creative, it, you know. <laughs> And and uh, and change everything that we see. Some people you know, they have this uh, inner need to do that. And what's so fun is that both um, types of persons can be served with the same tangle. So, like, if you want to mess with it, great. I do, I do you know recommend you know keep the spirit of it because otherwise, then it creates a, you know makes a whole new tangle. And then you know of course you can make a tangle and you know, call it your own. Uh, I like to make sure that, um, there are no people know that there, there are some criteria that, um, we utilize for what we call a tangle. Um, and actually Linda Farmer from tanglepatterns.com has a really great article and I'm, I'm sure it is, is in an, if I'm not mistaken, it might be taken from, uh, one of the books, uh, that Rick and Maria wrote, um, but it's entitled, uh, you know, some like why is a, a or it's a, a pattern is not always a tangle, and she kind of outlines what we consider a tangle. And I know in the books it talks about how we, you know, deconstruct things. Oops, I missed that one little top up here. You know, we you know we see a pattern and then deconstruct it, making sure that it can. Um, you know, we'll utilize, um, I know they say no more than three of the uh, essential uh, elemental strokes. Uh, just to keep it simple and, you know, and kind of have as few steps as possible. There was some place I wanted to touch up and see what is so lovely about Zentangle. I can't find it. <laughs> All right. Oh, it's not this, but while I was just looking, I found that. So that's, this is basically it. And she didn't share any um, shading ideas. Again, you know, the, the fun thing is that, we, you know, you can employ your own creativity on how you might want to do that. 
Um, what could be fun with this one is, you know, we have all of these nice, uh, nice orbs that we've created, right? So uh, uh, gems or uh, like dew drops could be kind of fun. If that's something that you want to do, um, that's up to you. Uh, here's a quick, uh, maybe an easy uh, tangle, or I mean a shading idea for this, is just to put some graphite on one side. And I'm just going to do... Uh, Okay, I, I pick one side, and then it will do that on all the sides. Now you could, if you wanted to, well, no, I say you could flip sides if you want. You can, you can experiment to your heart's content. <laughs> this is what I'm doing for now, just to add a little bit of dimension. What's nice is that we have this, um, the contrast with the. Um, having the black in there, let me use this one as a little sharper. Well, not really. The tip looks nice, but it's floppy. And has some graphite kind of packed in there. So I'm just smudging out the graphite on that one side, not necessarily covering, um, because I don't want to cover all of it. I just want to kind of emphasize this one curve. Now, if these are, are large enough, or you have a tortilla on that is uh, where the tip, you see how that's flopping? <laughs> um, I hate it when that happens. Um, if, if you have one that has a smaller tip, oh, something like, like this. This is actually, um, there's different kinds. So tortilla is, you can tell that it's rolled paper. This is a, is a stump, and so it's denser. But I do like the thinness of that. Although, and these apparently you can sharpen. I have not necessarily tried to sharpen them myself. Um, I want to say uh, you do it like with sandpaper. See, that's all floppy too. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to experiment and and try to see what I can do with sharpening that one. But the stumps you can, or I mean the stumps, it's it you you can't you don't really see the ridges. It just looks it's the paper is very tightly packed where the tortillons you can I don't know if you can see the ridges on here or hear it with my nail these ones you just have to be careful that if you go like this like I have <laughs> some they end up like this you can stick something in the end you know like a I've done it with a toothpick and uh, or a, you know um, a paper clip so see that looks neat. It just adds some adds some little bit of dimension to that. Um, lots of different ways, um, like I said, that you could play with with this uh, if you want to shade. And it also looks really neat even without the shading. So um, Im imagining this in a larger larger grid pattern, you know, um, really really neat. It looks neat just as a as a four square as well. So um, anyway, really fun tangle. And I hope you enjoyed. If you did, <clears throat> would love to have a thumbs up or a like. Feel free to share it as well. And uh, if you like the video enough to see more, uh, we'd love to have you be a subscriber to the channel. Uh, if you do that and click that no the subscription button, then also make sure to click the notification bell so you can decide on uh, how you want to be notified if you want to be notified at all. So with that, in the description box, we will have uh, my step outs for this. Um, and if there's other interesting stuff, I will also put links to it there. There's a link to my website and our Facebook, uh, Tangle Addicts community. Um, I do do classes uh, every week on Thursdays. I do free classes, both free, free and paid classes. Um, the paid classes right now are, I, I'm having a monthly class. I also have a Tangle Addicts Club, and you can find out information for that on my website, uh, which would give you all access as, as I am developing uh, more classes. Um, it gets you a little discount on the, the regular class anyway. Um, anyway, check that out if you like. And with that, I wish you happy tangling.